All right, let's, we're going to get into the lesson, bring up for more there. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Glory and honor belongs to our God, to um, our pastor, Dr. Davis, to both superintendents, my Galilee family. Good morning. You may be seated. Yeah, let's pray. I'm excited this morning. Father, we thank you for another day of life. We thank you, Master, that you came, that we may have life and to have it more abundantly. Father, this morning as we exegete your word, as we examine your word, Father, let us get an understanding of your word. Let us take that word, hide it in our hearts, that we may not sin against thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have another great lesson. I was asked earlier in the week, why does the preacher say we have a great lesson? All the lessons are great. I must agree, but when you partake of it yourself and taste and see that the Lord is good, you can testify and know that the lessons, all of them, are great. The title of our lesson, Ambassador for Christ. Ambassador for Christ. We don't have a lot of time. I'm going to try to hit the main points if we can get through it. Ambassador for Christ, if you don't have a Sunday school book, the lesson, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, all the way through verse 21. And we're going to see the Apostle Paul. In my opinion, uh, Paul was a colossal figure back in history. And even now in the pages of scripture, he's still a colossal figure. Amen. In this lesson, the Apostle Paul gives us two concepts to consider. At the height of his apostolic ministry, he gives us a descriptive observation concerning the office of ambassador, a close examination. Second, he gives us a prescriptive concept, meaning handing down instructions on how we should execute the office of ambassador. We want to look at the facts. We've been commissioned to be an ambassador. We want to look at the principle, what it means to be an ambassador. We want to look at the realization that everything we do represents Jesus Christ. And you ask the question, what is an ambassador? An ambassador is one who is credit diplomat of the highest rank sent by a country to represent another country. Can I submit to you this morning, we who are believers in Jesus Christ are ambassadors. Are we supposed to be ambassadors for Jesus Christ? The Lesson is formulated around the golden text. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Church, we who again are ambassadors, we who are the ecclesia with the church, we should be showing forth Jesus Christ. Amen? The late great preacher, Dr. Charles Hatton Spurgeon, said this about ambassador. To preach the whole truth is an awful charge. And you and I who are ambassadors for God, we must not trifle, but we must tremble at the word of God. Here Paul talks about a reverence and a genuine fear for God. Look with me, if you will, in 2 Corinthians 5 and 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. 
and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. The Apostle Paul wants us to understand it's a serious thing to acknowledge God on who he is and how we should reverence him. We should have a genuine fear of Almighty God. And the commentary suggests that we don't preach on fear anymore. We don't, we don't teach the people anymore hardly who God is, that he is a just God, that he is a consuming fire. We don't talk much about reverencing God and fear, fearing God. Can I tell you, if we, if we take our eyeglasses, clean them up a little bit, put them back on, we might get a better perspective of who God is. And Paul say, listen, I persuade you about the terror of the Lord. We who are ambassadors for Jesus Christ need to be on the front lines trying to persuade people who are on their way to a burning hell, letting them know that the wages of sin is death and the gift to God is eternal life. Paul says, listen, I have manifested myself with God. God knows me and I know him. I am a, an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And Paul says, listen, you who, who I'm preaching to in your conscience, I know me, know who I am. Paul says, I live the life before you. So I am presenting the word of God to you with my credibility. We should present the word of God to those who are on their way to hell by our conversation and by our lifestyle. We should remind the people that God is a consuming fire. We should remind them that he do not play with his business. But church, we, we put him back on the back burner. We come in and get this drive-in service and we leave out of here and there's no change on the outside of these four walls. The apostle Paul says we should be persuading men in our daily conversation and how we live that there is a heaven and there is a hell. Can I submit to you this morning, we have made heaven less appealing and hell less horrifying. Don't miss that. We don't talk much about heaven and we don't talk much about hell. Everybody is going to heaven. It's not true. The wages, the Bible talks about, the Bible talks about a uh, few people is gonna find that narrow way. And since we know that, since we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ, we should be sounding the alarm. If you're outside of the will of God, if you have not confessed him with your mouth as Lord and Savior, you're on your way to hell. So the apostle Paul said, hey, listen, I persuade you not. Amen? Let's move right along. For we commend not ourselves again unto you. The apostle Paul is ministering saying, listen, I, I don't present myself back to you again. As the first letters you receive, understand that. Paul says, here, I'm here to commend you that you've came into the knowledge of God, that you, when you examine people, you look at the heart and not the outer appearance. Of course, the outer appearance is important. But here the apostle Paul say, listen, that there are going to be those who are going to glory in their appearance. Don't be fooled by those people. Don't be bamboozled by those people. Paul says, listen, I want to commend you that you have enough resources, you have enough knowledge to distinguish between outer appearance and the circumcised heart. We want to look at people's hearts and make an, an examination if they're saved or not. We can do that. Amen? We're moving right along. We don't have much time. Verse, verse, verse 13. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is of God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your call. Paul says, listen, now that I'm radical for Jesus Christ, there are some going to tell me that I'm out of my mind. While you're holding the bloodstained banner up and you're saying, for Christ I live and for Christ I die, people are going to call you crazy. They're going to call you self-righteousness. Why is that? Because you're pressing toward the mark. When Paul had his Damascus Road experience, he never looked back, but he pressed toward the mark. When you make a stand for Jesus Christ, people are going to call you names. They're going to say, hey, this self-righteous brother here, I know he got skeletons in his closet. No, 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 that's not the point. The point is this. We set aside these sins that easily beset us, and we press toward the mark. Amen? We need not hide behind the sin that we all have fallen short. Yes, we have, but we don't stay there. 
we continue to move forward and we get better and better as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Amen? So Paul said, listen, don't be dismayed if they call you this and call you that because you're radical for Jesus Christ. I've been called crazy, silly. Our preacher doesn't take all of that. It does take all of that. Why is that? Because there's a clear and present danger. There are a lot of people, again, on their way to hell. And so I want to beseech you, stand with me and be radical for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. They're going to call you all kind of names. Self-righteousness is one of them. But listen, as long as you're not promoting yourself and you're promoting Jesus Christ, don't worry about what they say to you, about you. This is what the Apostle Paul is saying here in this lesson. Verse 14, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge not that if one died for all, then all were dead. The Apostle Paul says this, what motivates me is my love for Christ. My love for my brothers and my sister compels me to warn them about the coming judgment. Warn them that, hey, listen, God is a loving God. He's a forgiving God. My love for my brothers and sister compels me to fight on a little while longer. Paul was radical for Jesus Christ, and what constrained him, what kept him, was the love of Jesus Christ. Business. We need to develop a zeal and a love and a passion for Jesus' business, for God's business. It should be the love that motivate us to want to tell somebody else about somebody who can save anybody. That is our job as an ambassador to warn the people, to encourage them, God is a loving God. God is a forgiving God. Yes, However, he is a God of wrath. Yes, but my love, yes, my love, you can have the riches, you can have this, you can, sell, you can sell and give all to the poor, but I have not love. I have nothing. We should understand that as being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Verse 14. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves. We can really stop right there. Jesus Christ died for us. Paul says this, it's no longer who I who live, but it's now Christ who lives in me. We died to the old man. Now we have a new occupation, ambassadorship. We should die to ourselves, find out what God wants us to do, and activate our gifts and our talents for the sake of Jesus Christ. We need to set ourselves aside. There's a battle going on the inside. There's, there's, the, there's the old nature and there's a the new nature. But if we, if, we, if we don't give that old nature something to fight with, guess what? He loses. And then the, the new nature, which is Christ, now lives in us, rules and reigns in our life. But here, but here where we fall short at church, people of God, we're constantly dibbling and dabbling and seeing God is not through with me yet. My question, has he gotten started on you yet? We should set aside these sins that easily beset us so that we can execute ambassadorship to the utmost. We should die to ourselves. This is what Paul is talking about here in this lesson. But unto him which died for them rose again. He died. So that we can die to ourselves. That's one of the hardest things for us to do. For all of us to die to ourselves. Sacrifice. Sacrifice this selfish desire. But some of us wants to fuel this desire and fuel it. And call ourselves ambassadors. We want to live any kind of way. Call ourselves ambassadors. We can't do it church. How can we as ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Uh, clean the kitchen up. I stated, how can a filthy dish rag clean the kitchen up? Me as a preacher, I am charged to live worthy by which the call by which I've been called. Some of these preachers, yeah, some of us, we got side pieces. We got, can I say this, hoochie mamas? Some have hoochie daddies. Yet and still, we want to call ourselves ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Are you serious? We want to go out here and live any kind of way. And I'm not poking fun. I'm not poking at nobody. But ambassadorship is a requirement. We, we, we want to we wanna live this homosexual lifestyle. Yeah, 
lesbian lifestyle, but want to be recognized as an ambassador. Me and you want to beat on your wives and cuss your wives out, yet recognized. You want to be recognized as an ambassador? Are you serious? And those who, those who know these people are not living right, you catapult them in the leadership position and they're not living right? Are you serious? Don't you know we're going to be held accountable that we agree with foolishness? Are you serious? There is a requirement for ambassadorship. If you're not living right, you should not be promoted into leadership position. You know, there's a gentleman, and I'm not afraid to say this, he leads our city. One side of his mouth, he says, amen. The other side of his actions, he's leading the, the parade in the LBG community. Yet and still, he want to bring the city together and say, we need to pray. Are you serious? You cannot serve two masters being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. But we know these folks are not living right. We put them in the front line. Anyway, don't you know we're hurting the body? Don't you know we're, hurt? we're sitting on a platform for Jesus Christ? But we say amen to the foolishness? Are you serious? Therefore, henceforth, know we, no man after the flesh, ye, though we know Christ no longer. Now that we have been born again, we see Jesus Christ with a new perspective. A, and not a worldview perspective, but a biblical worldview. We now see Jesus Christ as he is. We used to view him nonchalantly. But Paul says now that we come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we see him in a different light now. So since we see him in a different light, we must act accordingly, church. We don't view him as we used to view him when we was on the outside living fire, when we have not accepted him as our Lord and Savior. But now he is our Lord and Savior. So we view him as Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen? Amen. Therefore, if any man Oh, we talk about this text so much. Therefore, if any man, y'all see that two-letter word, if? That is a powerful two-letter word, which based on contingency. Yeah, it's based on contingency. That two-letter word brings us to God. It's a walking bridge, right? If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are if, though, if, if it is conditional. It is it's based on contingencies. You see people constantly clowning and clowning and clowning. There's a real possibility. They have not accepted Lord as, as, as their, uh, Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. And you know, John said something here so powerful. John 1, John, uh, uh, 1 John 3 and 6, it says this, No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues in sin has either seen him or know him. Yeah, yeah, don't make excuses for somebody that keeps on sinning. There's a real possibility they are outside of the body of Christ. He says, you will not continue on living in sin. If you have made it your business to be comfortable living in sin, you need to check your heart. You need to see if the heart has been circumcised. Yes, and you who promotes it, you need to check your salvation as well. God has called us to a higher calling that we are ambassadors and representatives for Jesus Christ. But do not, make a, do not continue to say, oh, God is not through. He's not through. Yeah, we're still working toward perfection, but we need to maintain a grade point average in the classroom. What is that grade point average? Be ye holy as I am holy. God would not give us a standard if we could not keep it. We need to stop making excuses for our behavior and call ourselves ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Amen? All things are good who had reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ, the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. 
Here, Jesus, God sits down in heaven and writes a plan out. Hey, listen, there's nobody worthy to bring fallen man back to a holy God. So they, they write a contract up. Uh, he, he gives his son a body and comes down, and then he, 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 he hangs, bleeds on the cross, dies for our sin. That is reconciliation, which, which he brings men back to himself. Reconciliation. And church, don't you know we are part of that plan? We who have accepted the perfect gift of salvation, we're supposed to be reconciling those who are outside of the body back to Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't miss that. The Great Commission. We have been charged and commissioned to bring these people to Jesus Christ. We have a very serious mission. Amen. And five minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> ambassador, ambassador, ambassador. I need to live a certain way. I need to hold the bloodstained banner up. Yes. I want to encourage you guys, as Paul writes in his letter, to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Don't applaud the foolishness. Don't put these folks in leadership position. You know what, church? Here's the deal. Why is that? Because we, 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 we have accepted a uh, 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 competency of a character. You're good at what you do, so stay in position. Your lifestyle does not exemplify Jesus Christ, but yet you're good at what you do. You can sing well, you can pray well, you can finance well, but your lifestyle does not match up that to Jesus Christ. But you put these people in leadership position and pin a medal on them as ambassadorship, really? And they're not living right? Seriously? Oh, oh, five minutes, five minutes. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. I'm going to skip that one. We got five. Let's go to verse 21. Here's the, here's, here's the foundational uh, golden text here. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness. Don't miss that. Of him. The, the message of reconciliation. He made him who knew no sin for us. We should have been dead on that cross. But here he comes in and he imputes righteousness, his righteousness into us. We didn't deserve it. Amen. We deserve to die. We should have died. But due to his love, he so loved the world that he put a plan together to save mankind. Oh, yes, he did. Not only to save you, but to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Can I, can I encourage you? Can I beseech you this morning? Examine how you're living. And if you're not living up to the standard of holiness, re-examine, get things right in your life so that we can be ambassador for Jesus Christ, so that we can, we, can, we can tell these people, hey, listen, God loves you. The wages of sin is death. However, the gift of God is eternal life. Join with me to be an ambassador. Start right here in the church. Church is so sad, some of us can't even come together. Worship. Let, we want, some of us won't even come in here. We won't even speak to one another. And we got a nerve enough to call, each other, call ourselves ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Are we serious? Paul says we need to examine ourselves to see whether or not we're in the faith. Amen? Ambassadors for Jesus Christ. I hope something was said. Uh, as I was studying the lesson again, I'm always reminded I must be first partakers of what we study and what we put out. Being a preacher, being on a platform, I should be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. You should not see me in the club or see me running around here chasing women or even chasing men. You got them going both ways. <laughs> and I'm serious. You, you should not see that. Ambassador for Jesus Christ. Amen.